Number 10. Only the rich can wear purple. Oh yes, the wealthy and elite of Rome. What a sight it must have been. Gorgeous marble, the amazing architecture, and the vino. Oh baby, sign me up. Someone take me back. We have to thank the Romans for a lot. They were pretty important for culture, history, and well, just about everything. They're the Romans. However, this doesn't make them impervious to stupidity. No matter how great your society is, uh, there's going to be some dumb stuff. Take for example the law that poor Romans were forbidden from wearing luxurious purple. Yes, that's right. Romans were gatekeeping purple. Listen, I love purple just as much as Samuel Jackson does, but you don't see me gatekeeping it. That's like me gatekeeping chicken parm. Something so delicious should be shared with the world. I would argue that any society that doesn't allow their citizens to purchase certain goods because of their wealth, well, they're missing the point, especially from a capitalist point of view. I love shopping, I love them all. I wanna buy purple and I want the chicken parm, baby. Number nine, Draco's Law. Draco, the ancient Greek legislator, was sitting alone one day and said to himself, man, you know, I'm, I'm tired of petty criminals getting away with their petty crimes and their pettiness. So he, in a nutshell, basically said that anyone who commits a crime ever will have to pay with their lives. Ooh. But see, this begs the question, what about the lovely people in our society who commit the most heinous crimes? Should they be treated as the same who steal a loaf of bread from the baker? Mm, I don't know about that. Or what about even lesser crimes? Now, without incriminating yourself, I'm a friend of Saul Goodman, by the way, so please don't do that. He wouldn't want you to. But think of all the little crimes that you've done and never saw the inside of a jail cell. Not even theft, I'm talking even more smaller than that. Like jaywalking, for example. We've all done jaywalking. Everyone's done it. Traffic violations, all that kind of law. Look, the law isn't perfect, but we can't put everyone away on the chopping block just because they stole your eraser in the sixth grade. That's not how it works. Number eight, King Hammurabi. Oh, wise King Hammurabi, what knowledge of Babylon do you bring us today? The law, how's that? Yeah, 282 to be exact. However, what's more interesting is the eye for an eye motto that these laws were written around. If a thief did get sticky fingers in the cookie jar, then perhaps he should lose the hand that was caught inside said cookie jar. Should a woman be caught with a lover, then her and the lover shall be tossed into the Tigris. A man can have multiple lovers, though that's, that's fine, of course. Well, it has to be fair. Come on, it wouldn't be fair if a man couldn't do that. Come on. If someone accuses someone of something but can't produce acceptable evidence, then the person who was accusing would end up, well, not alive. I think you guys get the point. I have nothing to worry about because I'm a good boy and I've never done anything wrong ever. Nope, I've never been in the timeout corner. <laughs> Number seven, hands off my cocoa puffs. Wheat, grain. Today, a lot of our grains get consumed in a bowl of 2% milk for a healthy and balanced breakfast. I'm a man who enjoys a little Quaker life. It's good stuff. However, back in ancient times, grain was important. Grain makes bread, and that's about as plentiful and cheap as you can get. So the Romans took it very seriously. If you dare cut or take someone else's grain, you could wind up in some real trouble, Buster. But only if you were a man. The uh, D-life penalty wasn't applied to anyone that was young or not a man. Instead, they had to pay back double what they took in grain. Today, if someone took my grain, I probably wouldn't have an issue with it. I live in the city. I got no room for grain. It's too cumbersome. Plus, who has time to make bread in this lifestyle? I'm too busy trying to make you guys laugh. Although, if you guys want to cook and bake me stuff, uh, I'm not going to say no. Number six, false song. Another one from the Romans. This one is quite silly. Okay, so remember Weird Al Yankovic? Yeah, classic 80s parody songwriter and performer. He was living it up in the 80s, right? With songs like Eat It and Like a Sergeant. If you know, you know, it's good stuff. Well, there was a law in ancient Rome that forbid this kind of chicanery, nonsensical tomfoolery, if you will. I, for one, enjoy some of the Weird Al stuff. It's funny, creative, and honest to God, some are just better than the original. That's how it goes. Well, you couldn't do this in ancient Rome, unless it was true. So basically, you can't sing about food unless it's really a song about food, and not me changing the lyrics to an existing song that was already about food, otherwise, you end up somewhere you don't want to be. Number five, short king. Short kings rejoice, for I have found invulnerability, or at least diplomatic immunity. There was a law in Qin Dynasty China that said any man or woman shorter than five foot two could not be guilty of any crimes. 
However, I like to ask a few questions. So Brianna, that's our lovely editor, she's fantastic. Get ready for a speed round of questions. What if you were a kid who was over the height limit and committed these crimes? What if you had lost one of your limbs, thus making your height shorter, even though your original height was more than the required height? What if it was a crime from a really long time ago and you shrunk with old age and now you're below the limit, even though when the crime was done years ago, you were over the what limit? What if train A leaves Chicago for Detroit going 60 miles per hour, and at the same time, on an adjacent track, a train leaves Detroit heading for Chicago going 45 miles per hour. Detroit is 280 miles away. So where are they gonna meet up? What's gonna happen? I don't know, too many questions. My brain can't handle it. Oh man, too many questions. Number four, ladies in yellow. Venice, 1400s. If the Assassin's Creed series taught me anything, is that it was a great time. And that running on rooftops in a unique white robe was just a part of life. I really miss those games, man. The new ones just, well, they kind of suck. I mean, we had it all back then. There was Venice recreated in all its glory, shops, stalls, mercenaries, thieves, and of course, my favorite, ladies of the evening. In the game, these ladies can be hired to make useful distractions against the lonely Borgia guards. You can identify these ladies as there's a giant glowing emblem above them that says they are for hire. Well, they didn't have that back in the 1400s, obviously. So the business was doing so well, uh, the red light district if you want to call it, that the Venetian government wanted the ladies to wear yellow. You know, in case you have to uh, do any sleuthing about, if you uh, know what I'm saying. <laughs> Number three, no armor in parliament. I guess this makes sense. Back in 1313, it was decided that no man shall wear armor in Parliament. Hard to say that without a British accent, it's fun. Strangely enough, this wasn't changed even though knight's armor kind of became obsolete. So in theory, if you walked into Parliament in knight regalia, maybe minus a sword and or a mace, because uh, you probably wouldn't get very far with that, but you'd be breaking a law regardless just wearing the knight stuff. Supposedly this law has its origins from Edward II being picked on by other barons and nobles. I just think it's a matter of comfort, really. Moving is one thing, but imagine sitting in a room with a hundred other men and women wearing armor, no windows, and trying to hear a conversation. There'd be a lot of metal clanking, and uh, on a hot summer day, might be a little stinky. Number two, Napoleon Swine. This one is just too weird not to mention, but Napoleon, the Corsican ogre, mostly remembered for his military tactics, and to be fair, the, the dude was good. He, he, he was pretty good. However, not talked about very much, or at least as much as his military successes, was his crazy political stint as the Emperor of France. Yeah, weird. France was going through some changes, and during all this craziness, Napoleon managed to make himself Emperor. And just like the revolution before him tried to give the people power, well, it kind of went to his head. Well, there's a lot of heads and deheading back then. <laughs> it kind of went to his head, making laws and decrees that were kind of, well, messed up. One such law was to protect his public image. No one was to jest him. Thus, a law was created that no pig shall be named after Napoleon. Okay, fair, but in my opinion, naming anything after the guy who stripped you of your rights and plunged the world into what could be considered one of the first world wars ever, well, that's the last thing I'd want to name anything. Yeah, I wouldn't want that. I see you're drinking 1%. Is that because you think you're fat? Number one, punishment of the sack. I just had to put this one in here. Sort of a law, but more of a punishment that fits the law, but it's all intertwined, it, it makes sense, and it's just cool for number one. Basically, back in Roman times, life was good. They had so much time to think. Think about the sun, the moon, and the stars. Oh, beautiful, gorgeous. Well, they also had time to think about this really creative punishment. Ponina aculi, or aculi. Ponina aculi. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. My Latin's not that great. Or penalty of the sack. Basically, you get a big sack. You blindfold your perpetrator. You then throw in a dog, a monkey, a snake, a chicken. This sack of fun then gets thrown into a deep body of water. Thus, the show begins. Now, I can't even imagine the foulness of what would happen inside that sack. So, to avoid this, I will behave myself. No need to put me in the timeout corner. Plus, Saul Goodman's my lawyer. He's my friend. He can get me into anything. Well, except maybe a sack full of uh, crazy screaming animals. That would that would be a horrible way to, to not live anymore. That would be pretty bad. Number 10, Spellcast. I got a bunch of great ones coming for you right out of Babylon, so buckle in folks, you're gonna feel the wrath of King Hammurabi today. This law is to protect against those pesky conjurers, those spellcasters, those pesky wizards. Oh, worst. This law states, <clears throat> 
If a man has been accused another of laying a spell upon him, but has not proved it, the accused shall go to the sacred river. He shall plunge into the sacred river, and if the sacred river shall conquer him, he that accused him shall take possession of his house. If the sacred river shall show his innocence, and he is saved, the accuser shall be put to his delifing. Oof. Basically, if you start accusing people who can't swim of spellcraft, which, I mean, everyone can't swim back then, that's just how it goes, there's no yieldy swimming lessons, or at least I don't think there was, you're gonna be the hottest real estate mogul in town. You're gonna be owning a lot of houses. All you're missing is a get out of jail free card and the orange properties, because those are always the best monopoly. Everyone loves the orange properties. I don't know why, they just do. Number nine, building code. For our Canadian fans out there, maybe you remember a certain blonde haired dad who helped rebuild not up to code buildings during the 2000s on a hit reality TV show. No, it wasn't me, silly. Mike Holmes. Yeah, Mike Holmes. We all love him. We remember him. If I've learned anything in my time as a Canadian, it's that certain beams have to be load bearing and they have to go in certain places. To learn from the show, at least. Well, another law from ancient Babylon was inspired by Mike Holmes, or uh, at least had him there in spirit. This law states, if a builder builds a house for a man and does not make its construction sound, and the house which he has built collapses and causes the de-life of the owner of the house, the builder shall be put to his own de-lifing. Listen, I would love it if there was never a single building mistake ever again, but man, that's pretty serious. I mean, come on, what would modern landlords be without some 50-year-old shoddy apartment to rent out? Give me rent. You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door! Number eight, Operation. Remember the fun family game Operation? That's right! Folks pulling large and obtuse shaped objects out of a man who's not even asleep for his own major surgery. Water on the knee? Pfft. More like easy one, two, three, dad. I got this. Oh no, the surgery didn't go well. That'll be 30,000 Monopoly dollars. Uh oh! Continuing with the trend of messed up laws, there's one more from King Hammurabi. If a physician operates on a man for a severed wound with a bronze lancet and causes the man's perishing or destroys the man's eye, which I don't know how that would happen, but okay, they shall cut off his hand. Now, that would really spice up family board game night. Be careful with Charlie Horse Dad, wouldn't want to lose that pole polishing hand. I know I wouldn't. <laughs> uh oh! Number seven, ancient insurance. Yes, yes, I hear you. I know you wanted some laws about ancient insurance because insurance law is super interesting and of course I found something related. Not exactly insurance as you know it today. No, no waiting on hold for a claim they probably won't give you. No, this was more about justice. This law states, if the robber is not captured, the man who has been robbed shall, in the presence of God, what else, make an itemized statement of his loss and the city and the governor in whose jurisdiction the robbery was committed shall compensate him for whatever was lost. Kind of like a forced insurance policy. Judging from the last couple of points, I don't want to see what happens if they find out you falsified that information before before God. I don't, I don't think that would be a good idea for you. Don't do it. Number six, farmers. Irrigation. It's the invention that made agriculture boom. Now in Mesopotamia, people could grow food, lots of food, and civilization kind of just built itself around it. However, this irrigation was all fueled by mother nature, so floods and droughts kind of put a damper on that. It's kind of like when I fart. I never know when it's gonna happen, it just does. Kind of like the force. Maybe sometimes I force it out. Anyway, this law states that if a man neglects to maintain his dike and does not strengthen it and a break is made in his dike, then the water is carried away from the farmland. The man in whose dike the break has been made shall replace the grain which has been damaged. If he is not able to replace the grain, they shall sell him and his goods, and the farmers whose grain the water has carried away shall divide the proceeds from the sale. Now listen, I, I, I like that because I grew up in, in rural Canada, so you know farmers helping each other. I like that, neighborly, except the part uh, where the guy that makes a mistake, we sell him and take his stuff. That part I don't like. Helping each other's great. Dividing the proceeds is awesome, but maybe we should be nice to Bill. Sometimes Bill makes mistakes. That's all I'm saying. Number five, whales. Back in the day, a whale, dolphin, or any animal like that could fetch you a high price. So every once in a while, a creature like that washes up on the beach. You can understand why everyone would want such a stinky, rotting corpse. Whale oil was a hot commodity of the past. Edward II, being the snobby royal that he was, said, nah, why you made it, bruv? The whale, that's more oil. You know, kidnap, that's more. So in 1324, he made a law that said any whale that washes up on shore belongs to him. Now, I'm not exactly sure how that works because there's no phones and it would take a minute to get the message to them, but if the whales wash up on the beach, it ain't going anywhere, so uh, have fun fighting over it. Good luck, good luck, guys. Number four, stolen milk. Texas, the land of cowboys, barbecue, and Jesus. 
America at its finest. Shout out to Texas. How you folks doing? I'd love to come out and see you sometime. Maybe when I'm famous. Anyway, there's a law from Texas from way back in the day that I think was very strange. Up until 1974, it was illegal to milk your neighbor's cow. Now, for those that don't live in the country, I'd be the first to tell you how important agricultural communities are, and dairy farmers are some of the finest. Although I find it strange because after a long day of milking your cows, no farmer ever said, well, <laughs> better, over, uh, better go over to Dale's house and milk his cows. He ain't gonna do it. <laughs> no one ever said that. Farming's hard. The law was most likely there to protect those that would steal the white gold, not so much as awkwardly come over and milk old Betsy for you. It's kind of a weird thought. Number three, marriage in the afterlife. Oh boy, this one is so weird. Since the 19th century in France, marrying a corpse has been legal. Now, I know what we're all thinking, and that ain't the reason why it happened. Don't get, get your mind out of the gutter. Stop, stop it. It was more about legal birthright, like if your husband perished in battle before little Louis was born. However, I just can't stomach the issue of your partner being a corpse. Baby, I love you, and I don't care if your eyes are hanging out by a skull with a tendon. It doesn't matter to me that a stray dog took your leg away. Your intestines hanging out of your stomach is beautiful to me. That's just a new fashion trend. Oh, and the smell? Oh, I love the graveyard smell, honey. You're beautiful. Just weird. Imagine like showing up to a party like, hi, this is my wife, this is Christine. Number two, no Christmas. I don't know about you guys, but I love Christmas. Don't get me wrong, I'm looking forward to seeing all my friends at the cottage this summer. I got the Hawaiian shirt on, we're, we're cruising baby, I love it. But Christmas, man, that's my favorite. It's the shopping stress. I love to see the joy in people's faces when you get them gifts. I love gifts. Dinner, the desserts, I love it all. And of course, I was always a good boy on Christmas. I promise, mm -hmm. never bad once. Well, back in the 1600s, King Charles I was unhappy with another group that did not share his religious values. It's kind of a trend in history. So for this, he canceled Christmas. He outlawed Christmas. How awful. Imagine, no more awkward dinners with your uncle saying something insensitive at the dinner table. No more stuffing your face with good food and no more Santa Claus. I didn't think he was a thing back then in the 1600s, but uh, we'll go with it. So back in 1660, this law was revoked under new management. And thank goodness, because I love Christmas. Thank you for that, thank you. Number one, trial by combat. My brother in Christ, this one is really strange. I, Sometimes marriages don't work out, things happen, life is not easy, and managing your way through a relationship can be tough. So, anyone that's going through a divorce right now, the best advice I could give you is that, look, you once loved each other at some point, so do your best, have some grace, and split peacefully. It's just better for everyone that way, including yourselves. That being said, a medieval German tradition was to decide on divorces by combat. What else, of course? The husband would sit in a hole with his arm tied and uh, have a bag of rocks, and the wife would have a club. Basically, it was time to go Katniss Everdeen on each other. And I can't really describe what happens next because YouTube probably wouldn't like it. But that's how it goes.